Hi there, this is Jacqueline with Nickel and Dime Decor, and uh, this is what we're going to make today. A fold and stitch wreath. This was, is a, my sister-in-law wanted this and asked me if I could make it, and it was my first time to try, but it, I got it done. And uh, so join me, okay? And let's see how to make a fold and stitch wreath. There's lots of videos on YouTube of how to do this. And uh, I'll just add another one to it, okay? Thank you. Okay, guys, here are the components. You will need 12 7-inch blocks, 12 seven inch blocks and 12 five inch blocks. This is what was confusing to me is in looking at the pattern, you see the red trim, that's called your front. This white is considered your applique. And this is considered your back. Well, I, I just couldn't get my color choices to decide which to do what, you know, which I wanted for front, which I wanted for back, because I couldn't understand how this if this is the back, how come it was on the front? <laughs> I know I'm a little slow, but I, I found this pattern so confusing. But I just dove in and decided to do it. So if my color choices don't really work out, if it's not the best in the world, it's my first try and we'll do it again. But this is what you need. Uh, uh, this right here is called Bosal, and you can order it. I ordered it from Annie's catalog. I, I bet Shabby Fabrics still has it on their website. She made a video two years ago using, uh, uh, showing you how to make this. And in fact, I put it on my channel. And it's under playlist under yo-yos, which I know that doesn't make any sense, but I didn't know where else to put it. If after watching my video you're still confused, you may go and watch the Shabby Fabrics tutorial also. Okay. Uh, my sister-in-law picked this out, and and I am making it for her. And I just had these fabrics available, and that's what I chose. Okay, this one is uh, considered my front. It's going to be this trim, this red trim up here. That's considered this. And I have made a two inch slit in the middle. So you can turn. This is considered my back piece. And I have adhered this five inch square of the bosal on here. It has a felt side and a shiny side, and of course you put the shiny side down and adhere it really, really well. I, I did about six seconds on each area, so you do it quite a while. And then to get these five inch squares, take a piece of fabric, and you're gonna need about 34 inches long. Put it on your cutting board by 11 inches. Put it on their cutting board and adhere your heat and bond or whatever you use uh, to applique. Put it on the back. 
right across, just like that. And then cut your two pieces after you get it pressed on here and trim it down. Then you'll take each one of these and you will cut them to three five inch strips. And then with the five inch strips, you're going to get six five inch squares. Two of them will get you 12. And that's what I have right here. I haven't taken the backing yet off. That's why it's so stiff. Okay. They give you a, a template in the back of your pattern piece. And I made me a stronger one here. This just shows us where we're going to sew. That's all this is for. All right. Now... After you have adhered this to the back of your fabric, you're going to put right sides together. We are going to pin, and it does not matter if these match just perfect, these edges. Uh, it doesn't matter. We're going to pin. Of course, you'll have to take your pins out when you start sewing that. And <clears throat> we are going to sew right around the edge, right around the edge. If you wanna put your uh, zipper foot on, then that would work really good. I haven't taken the time to do that. I'm gonna try it with just my regular foot on there and you want to do sharp corners so we're going to sew pivot and sew i will uh, move the camera over and we will have a view of that our directions tell us do not sew on the phone So that's what we going to just butt up right against it. Should have put my needle down, that would have made it a lot easier to pivot. I need one more. As I get to my corner, I just make sure that I go one stitch. And now, I, I didn't back up, you know, when I first started, so I'm gonna go over what I just sewed. That's as good as going back and forth. <clears throat> okay, we've got this part done. Next, I will trim my seams to one quarter inch. Now I will trim my corners. And we will turn. Don't know exactly 
how this works. If that's enough room, it's kind of tight, but it's working. I think. <laughs> If you want to make your X bigger, you honestly can because we're covering it up. So it's okay if you want to. Because you see, that was a really, really tight go. Now we need a tool to poke our holes in, out, in. And I don't have anything except my scissors. I'm just gonna see if I can do it with my scissors. Then, this is where um, you need to take it and press it. You know, get it nice and flat, and I'll do that. I'll take it to the ironing board, and I'll do a little more to get my corners out. Then, this is when you're going to take this and put it right there. And see if we can score this and take this off. Just score it and then just peel it off. And you want to get this position now good. This must be perfectly aligned. You know, it'll, it'll make a big difference. Now, see my pattern? At, you can see the ducks. I'm so pleased. I'm glad you can see my ducks. That means a lot. All right, I'm going to take it to the uh, pressing board and adhere this. Then... We're going to come back, and you can either do a small zigzag or a decorative stitch of your choice. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. Uh, whatever, whatever you decide. Now this is this is what's going to show. This is what's going to go up. See like that. And, I, and see, I knew it would be disappointing because my ducks are not going to be right. But you know, let's see if I can, if that may, if I can get a duck, I can, I can get a duck there, but see, he doesn't show all the way either. So it doesn't really matter. My fabric is not going to work perfectly well. And that's, that's why you need to do either a solid uh, overall like this, not where they're spaced way apart like this, because see, uh, there's no way I can turn this to get a duck <laughs> to go up where you can see what it is. So I, I, can't, I can't help that. that. That's why in the choosing of the fabric is so important. And I didn't, I didn't understand enough of the pattern at the beginning to understand that. Okay, I'm going to adhere this, uh, do my stitch around. We just want to catch it all right around very neatly. Be right back. Make all of your 12 squares so like we did. Turn, put your 5-inch square, adhere it and do your small zigzag all the way around. You want to do that so that this can cool after you've pressed it. It helps it to adhere better. So do all of your 12 squares. 
here are all of my pretty squares done. Didn't they turn out nice? I'm not fretting over when I sew and what shows up over here. It is what it is. Whatever comes up here on this side, I'll just live with it. And because, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and my uh, ducks are, are just not going to work out, I don't think. So I'm not fretting over it. I mean, in fact, I'm not even thinking about that. Okay, next step. Take your template, because we have to sew all of these together. So take your template and mark this edge. This is our sewing edge. I have a friction pen that it will erase. Do all 12 of them like that with your line, sew line. Do all 12. Okay, guys, I've been putting, putting them together, as you can see. And when you put your two pieces together. This is my next two pieces. I've got back to back. And I'm going to sew where my marked line is right across, right across here. Now, it is suggested that you uh, shorten your stitch length to two, so you have a real tight stitch. And then, it shows that you, um, I, I can't think of her name on Shabby Fabrics, but she suggests that you start right here where your inside piece starts, not, at, not back here, not, not on the edge. Start right there and go a couple of stitches and then go back. And you have to kind of turn it a little bit and go back till you get to the edge and then come back and do it again. You've got to really reinforce this because this is a lot that we're sewing through Two, two thick, thick layers. Well, what, what she suggests now is that, and I put my, because sometimes your uh, line doesn't show on your fabrics real good. So I'm gonna kinda put this right there to kinda give me a gauge of what's my straight line. And uh, I'm going to sew this line, but I am, going to go back and sew it again when I get through. But I'm going to go ahead, sew this, and when I get all the way through, then I'm going to go backwards. until I get to the edge of that greenery. And then I'll take a stitch and cut my threads. And then I'm gonna go back up here and sew this again. I know it's a lot of, uh, if you want, I mean, I. If you start right here on the edge, you kind of, I know why she shows you just start right here, because you it will move on you. And that, that's the reason for it, so. So I'm going over it one more time. Take 
take out your pins and there's your next one and here's your line you got your line lined up for your next one it's already there now i'm going to lay this out for you and show you but see how it kind of naturally goes into a circle <laughs> i think that's pretty neat just remember to always um, put your marked line on the right hand side And I pinned, uh, pinned this for you so you could see how these ends just, just meet the, the two tips. This, this one's better. See how they just barely meet. And I'm going to sew those by hand because... I just don't think she showed how to do it. Um, the lady on Shabby Fabric showed how to do it. She pinched these together and just did a zigzag over and over. And I might try it, <laughs> but it's, it's just gonna be hard to put that under there. I think I would have better luck doing it by hand. You know, it was suggested that you could put a little bead right there, too, in between them. And sew so, them, um, if you wanted to do that. But we'll have a look at it on the table. It's, it's really turning out. I just, I never had a concept of what this was going to look like. I really didn't. I didn't fold that out right. I'm going to keep sewing and keep going, okay? And uh, when I get the other four on and join the last, I'll show you what it looks like. Well, what do you think? I tell you, I am amazed. <laughs> I wouldn't have given you two cents for that pattern. I just, uh, you know, I, it was hard to me. I, I, I didn't. I just couldn't picture it uh, of what to do. But once I did it, well, it made, you know, it worked out fine. That's what I say. Sometimes you just have to say, okay, I'll do what they say and go on. And But see the points in the middle? How pretty. Put your candle or your centerpiece, whatever, your greenery. Oh, gosh, that will make a beautiful table when... And it's okay that my ducks don't show <laughs> on top. It's just okay. There's one. He's upside down, but he there's one. But uh, they do show up, the little ducks, uh, around the center part, don't they? Well, anyway, and I, I love the zigzag stitch. I really do. And look on top. Uh, see how pretty that is? Uh, see, I used a red on the underneath and the green showed just a little bit from on top, but I like it. I like the way that looks. So, there's your fold and stitch wreath. And remember, you can get it at uh, annies.com uh, catalog, order it online, or Maybe Shabby Fabrics still has it. Uh, I don't know about that. <clears throat> but it is an older project. But, you know, I had never seen one. I have never seen one. And if it wasn't for my sister-in-law, I would have never made it either. Uh, I do love the green fabric, too. That uh, I, I'm very pleased how it all turned out. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, thank you so much for watching me, and uh, make one for Christmas if you'd like. Don't forget to subscribe or push the like button or even share with somebody. I'd appreciate it. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day.